Hey, what's up guys? My name is Cameron Geller from We Are Film, and today I'm doing a video on how to create some proxies for any video editing software. So this goes for Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve, Final Cut, Avid, pretty much any place if you want to use proxies and speed up your workflow. Uh, this is probably one of the best ways. I've also found this is kind of a simple way to transcode uh, maybe dailies or something along those lines. Obviously there's no syncing audio or, or that, so that that's obviously different. But if you're just transcoding footage and need to send it to an editor or you need to just relink them in something like DaVinci Resolve to edit faster, I've been really liking this workflow with Edit Ready. So uh, just to get this out of the way, I am not sponsored at all. I was not sent this software. I paid for the software completely on my own. So no sponsorship here. And, uh, and I'll say this software is not perfect, so uh, you know I'll get that out of the way. But I found that this is a really good alternative to something like Blackmagic's um, proxy generator. The issue that I have with Blackmagic's proxy uh, generator, which I think I, didn't, uh, I, I guess I st still do have it, um, is there is an incredibly limited number of just codecs and workflows and different things that you can do to create this and. For instance, one of the problems that I have with a proxy workflow is something like color. So if you're, let's say you're shooting in a log profile on maybe a Blackmagic or RED camera and you create a proxy and, uh, and I'll actually show you what the, you know, what the proxy generator looks like down here. Um, so, you know, you, you basically have four options, all of which are not usually things I like. Now I do like the idea that there's watch folders, but uh, kind of going back to that color workflow, let's say for instance, I'm shooting log with the red or a black magic camera and I want to, uh, and I make proxies and I, and I have a color on the original footage and I, I turn the proxies on and suddenly the color looks horrendous and then I can turn off the color, but then the color is not going to work and it's going to look flat and you know, like a log profile. So one of the big issues that I have is, is if I want to work with proxies, I want them to either look Rec. 709 uh, or look completely different. That way I can just edit the proxies. They can look decent on their own and I can turn off everything else. So uh, I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, but it's something that I battle with quite often and things like the proxy generator or even just making proxies in uh, Premiere or DaVinci Resolve, uh, I'm constantly running to this issue. So something like Edit Ready has sort of solved a lot of those problems for me and I'll get into how. So normally you would just uh, dump like a full day's worth of footage. I'm just going to show you like two or three clips so you can kind of see. So you would just drag your clips in from wherever. And what's really nice is that it automatically understands what this clip is. So this knows that this is red raw footage, um, R3D at 23976. Uh, progressive, there's no audio. And that there is, uh, you know, it's 4104 by 2160. Uh, it's got the duration, got some time code, right? So it knows these things already, which is really great. And, it, 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 and it's going to matter why it knows this in a second. So over here, there's a bunch of presets that they kind of auto generate for you. Um, I typically am using ProRes Proxy or ProRes LT. Kind of just depends on the day. Um, but there's tons of different ones, right? There's, you know, uh, ProRes 422HQ. You can do customs, right? So if you do custom, you could change like, oh, okay, I want, uh, you know, uh, maybe 422 uh, Proxy. And then I want, you know, no audio or ACC or whatever, right? And you can kind of go in from there. Uh, so, you know, personally, and, and I've even made my own presets. So that's another thing is you can save some. So like I have an HD ProRes 422 proxy with 709 LUT. And I'll get into what some of that is later. But let's just for now, we'll just set this to um, 422 proxy. Works great on the Mac, right? You can set your destination folder. Um, you can set the file name. So... Uh, for me personally, I just prefer the source file name, just that way it's going to work best with proxies. And of course you can change your for file format if it was custom. And where it really gets really interesting is the additional options. So if you click edit, and it's a little confusing the first time you open this up, there are a bunch of options that you can sort of have and add on to your preset. So things like video burn-ins and overlays. So uh, I'm going to select this. Um, so you can use a LUT. So if you had like an output LUT that you were monitoring your film with, you can also apply that just automatically, which is really cool. Um, and I'll go into a little bit. I, I use a different version later, but uh, you can also do frame rate adjustment. So like things like speed, um, frame resizing. I often click this one. Um, advanced encoder settings. So we'll click that one right now. Remove unused audio tracks. Uh, I'm not going to click that. You, normally you would if you were doing something like that. Uh, color conversion. We'll talk about this. 
Uh, time code overwrite. This is uh, kind of cool. So this is if you're, uh, you know, uh, overwrite time code with source file data and then recreate source folders. So this is preserving like a structure or something, uh, which can be really helpful if you're relinking clips. In my case, I don't think it really matters. So, uh, so you can select what you need. I'm going to select these. And I'll show you just kind of some some basics of what you can do. And I think what are probably the, the best for creating proxies. So the first one is frame resizing. And this one is fairly simple. So um, you have a bunch of different frame sizes and customizations, right? So typically what I'm going to do is create something like a 720p downscale. So um, I could go to 1082. Whoops. Um, probably 1080 is fine. Uh, and then you can also use scale using, so destination size uh, or destination size stretch, so stretch or pad. Um, I've personally never messed with these, but it, it, I'd prefer to just use the source aspect ratio so it just keeps it the same. And then scale quality, you can do good or best. I think best is fine. It, you know, you want it to look decent. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's just resizing. So now I can have everything at 1080p and now it's not at that, you know, crazy 4,000 pixels. So if I were to be making, uh, you know, depending on the editor or what you're looking for, you can make it any size you want. So video overlays is really cool. You can launch this editor and this is where you can just add a bunch of different stuff. So you can add text. So that could be just any text, whether, it, you know, it could be anything, right? Remember, this is for the entirety of the clip. You can add an image. So like a copyright or a logo or something. And you can also add these tags, which this is really, really cool. So... For instance, if you needed to add certain information for maybe VFX, um, you could add, you know, camera information, uh, clip information. So things like time code would probably be really good to add. So maybe I'll do like time code and I'll do um, real name. So maybe we'll put like the real name here, the time code here. And I'll just kind of like make this. Uh, this is just kind of the background. Time code, real name, uh, you could do, you know, like it has red specific stuff. This is kind of cool too. So like it knows certain things, uh, like for instance, maybe the, the ISO. So if you, again, if you were in a workflow where you needed to know this information, it's really cool. You can add this. So there's obviously a ton of different ones. We'll just do these for now, just cause it'll be a fun example. And then this is one that I think is really, 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 really awesome, which is the color space. So I shot all of this in R3D. Um, and you know, red uses the red, I think it's log three G 10. Um, I, I can't remember the exact name right now, but what it does is it automatically understands what the log profile you're in. Um, and, and I believe it, it just knows from the metadata itself. So it knows, oh, this is an R 3d. Like I know what log it's going to be in. And this is an auto color conversion. So this is great for that color issue I was talking about where if I'm using proxies and I have a color look on something, if I turn off the look and use the proxies, if they're just gray flat images, or if I leave it on, they usually look way worse. So in most cases, I just use and convert this to Rec. 709. But you could also do this if you wanted to convert, maybe you had a camera that had kind of a weird codec or excuse me, a weird color space. You could change all of it to maybe black magic film or like red log or something or airy log C. So again, it's kind of just depending on your workflow, but there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. Again, I just use it at 709 and you can see these thumbnails automatically update and now they're all, uh, and I can preview it here. Oh, I guess not the 709 lot, but basically it will make sure that those all now look like a 709 color space. So when I'm using my proxy file in my editor, I can just turn off all the color and just turn on proxies and they're all going to look at least decent enough. Or again, if you wanted a LUT, you can do that as well. Um, so you can turn on these advanced coder settings. So if you needed to hit a target bit rate, um, you can do that. I'm not going to, so I'm just going to exit out of this. But basically, once you have all of these in place and you know what they want to be, you can just click convert all and then I'll show you what this looks like. All right, so they're done. And let's say for some reason you didn't know where you put them, you put them in the wrong place accidentally. You can always right click and click show and finder and it'll show you where they are. Uh, of course, that doesn't matter to me. I know where they are. Um, but yeah, if we open these clips up now, I'll make this uh, fit inside here. You can see that uh, it's now a 1920 by 1080. Of course, this has a horrible flicker, so ignore that. Um, and there is our time code and our clip name and our ISO and our you know our real name in this case. So there you are you have all those things burned in obviously it's been converted obviously it's pretty low res so it kind of looks like crap but 
you know, if you're someone who is an editor and you need maybe certain information only for the uh, proxies and maybe you want the 709 proxies just so you can kind of get a decent look and, uh, you know, I don't know, maybe you want some information on there for the, the time code and things like that or the clip real name. That can be really, really handy and it can be really handy to do it here in the proxies before you go into an editor and you just get a lot more customization and edit ready than you do in something like proxy generator or honestly even in something like premiere or davinci resolve where you can export them they're they're not really tailored towards quick and that's the great thing about this is you know this was so quick it took me two minutes to just add some stuff and i could have went crazy with the overlays if i wanted to but uh it's really been a great workflow for me where when i ingest footage i immediately put it into edit ready and get proxies made and then I know I have good proxies that are going to look good and I can edit with. And then I just, you know, turn it off, relinked, and it's automatically good to go. So especially if you have a slower computer, um, this is a great way to do it, but still have that customization. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or if you have any recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know more about what you're doing for proxies or, or any, uh, you know, maybe questions I can answer. But thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys later.